to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In my many squandered teenage years of rebellion and arrogance towards God, years in which the things of this world were pressing strong on me and crowding out the desire for the things of God, I think my biggest mistake was to totally miscalculate and underestimate the person of Jesus, the Father's Word would come to us in the flesh. I just thought Jesus was another religious voice among many. He's just a guy sharing his thoughts, maybe good thoughts. What's wrong with love? You know, just somebody else like Oprah or Dr. Phil or one of those religious leaders with funny hats. That changed when I met Jesus. It all changed. The different sense. And the one true way I can sum up the greatest desire of my life and its greatest purpose now is to learn to know Jesus better, to love him more. It's in learning about Jesus that we learn best about ourselves. Without him, we, we can't even understand who we are. Oh, and there's so much to learn. He's the good shepherd. He's bred from heaven. He's the way, the truth, the life. The word made flesh. The father's heart revealed. Every title, every role he has reveals another facet of his person and thus who we are in him. Do you want to know Jesus better? Do you want to love him more? Then this day is for you. This great feast, one of my favorites of the church here, presents to us another facet of who Jesus is. He's a great king. He's the king of all other kings. He's a king like no other. Now, I am thoroughly an American. I think democracy is the best form of government for us. I don't want a king. I think the weaknesses of men and women need checks and balances. I mean, really, our history began with rebellion against the king. This can be a barrier to understanding Jesus as the true king. Jesus isn't a bit like King George, the one whom we rebelled against. Jesus is not like any other king this world has ever seen. He's not like any ruler this world will ever know. Our first reading. Oh, by the way, our first reading is the one that Jesus quotes when he's being interviewed, um, uh, accused um, by, by Caiaphas. And when Jesus quotes this reading, um, Caiaphas knew what he was doing. And... Caiaphas ripped his robes because he thought Jesus, claiming this passage for himself, was blaspheming, claiming to be God. He was. So, our first reading, Daniel saw heaven revealed, and he saw Jesus coming on the clouds of heaven. And before the Father, he received dominion and glory and kingship. 
All peoples, all nations, all languages serve him. I'm quoting the passage. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall never be taken away or destroyed. Why does he receive this dominion and glory and kingship? Because of who he is. He's the pre-existent son, equal with the Father and the Spirit, present before the worlds began, the one through whom the worlds were made. You came into existence through him. Without him, you would not be. He is the worthy king. You, we owe him allegiance. Astonishingly, he gave all that up. He emptied himself of every right that belonged to him as the pre existent son. The eternal son loved you so much, he abandoned all of heaven's glory and privilege and became just like you, tempted in every way, weak, dependent, needing to learn, remaining no less God, just like you, without all of those sinful choices. He received the death you deserved. And rising from the dead, he gave you his life, which you very much do not deserve, but is given as a gift. This king came only to serve, to love you, as the Bible says, utterly to the end. Our second reading calls Jesus the faithful witness. Because he said everything the Father told him to say, he did everything the Father told him to do, and thus Jesus deserves to be the ruler of the kings of the earth. It says that Jesus, the king, has made you a priest. He has made us priests, the, first, the second reading says. A priest is one who deals directly with God. We need the sacramental priesthood for the sacraments of the church. But there is another priesthood, what the church calls the priesthood of all believers. It happens at baptism. You are anointed priest, prophet, and king. Now, how are you a priest? Do you pray? Priests represent God. Um, priests bring prayers and sacrifices and offerings to God. Do you pray? Do you offer sacrifice? This and, and others? Do you worship God? Do you intercede? Do you cry out to God and ask for stuff? Then you're a priest by the nature of these actions and your baptism. The second reading says, to Jesus the King be glory and power forever and ever. We sing this in song so many different ways. To that do you say amen. That's being a priest. The second reading goes on to say, behold, he is coming amid the clouds. We know he's going to come back. We know some things about it. And it says, every eye will see him. I long to see that day. Will there be joy in our hearts? And it says, even those who pierced him will see him. We pierce him with our sins. What's that going to be like? You want to know this king more now. You want to love him as he is certainly worthy. Christ is a king of unimaginable glory and indescribable beauty. He's the one 
whose eyes, Scripture says, are like flames of fire, whose clothes are like white light. He's the one whom angel choirs eternally laud and the one before whom every crown will be cast. But in the gospel today, we have truly the most monumental injustice, the most titanic contradiction between appearance and reality this world has ever seen. The true king stands meekly before the earthly authority of the coward pilot. Let's try and visualize this together. He is whipped and crowned with thorns. He's been betrayed. He's been deserted. It said even before all this started, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he, he began to sweat blood and cried out for another way. That, that is a known physiological occurrence that is rare because it's the uttermost stress human beings can endure. Pilate is looking at this guy now. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, he had no majesty or form that we should look at him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of sufferings, and we held him in no account. And in this heaven-stopping restraint of his divine power, Jesus in, in some small measure gives us a peek into who he really is. Yes, I am a king. For this I was born. For this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Jesus says to Pilate, Jesus says to you, I am a king. It's the reason I'm here. My kingdom does not belong to this world. Make, 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 make no mistake about that. But I was born to bring my kingdom into this world. And my kingdom will never end. Imagine the scene. Pilate royal robes on the throne of judgment surrounded by signs of the power of Rome to all appearances being the one in total control. Jesus, tattered, tortured, like a lamb led to the slaughter. What kind of glory is this? The glory of obedience and faithfulness. What kind of authority and power is this? The authority and power of restraint and mercy. What kind of allegiance does this command? The allegiance commanded by example and not force of will. Have you ever heard of such a king? Has there ever been a more attractive or compelling exercise of kingly majesty? Jesus says in Matthew, do you not think I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? A Roman legion was four to 6,000 soldiers. 50,000 angels? You can call like that? I mean, what do we know from Scripture happens when one shows up? Tens of thousands? What holy restraint. A small sign of his fierce love for you. He was doing this for you. To receive what you deserve so that you can receive what he has. Jesus said also in Matthew, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants. It shall not be so among you, Jesus said. 
And then he showed exactly what that meant. He says, everyone who listens to the truth listens to my, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. I think this is important, brothers and sisters. Do you listen to his voice? In the Bible, yes. Teachings of the church, yes. But especially bringing all of these home and bringing power into our hearts, you listen to him in personal prayer. The Bible says today, listen to his voice. Today, every day. You can do this. Actually, you need to do this. Now you can listen in different ways. You can listen like a husband at the breakfast table trying to read the newspaper and, and constantly saying to his wife, yes, dear, yes, dear. That's distracted listening. You can listen like one getting yelled at, afraid, or bored. That's not the listening that Jesus is speaking about. The listening we owe Jesus is trust, is trusting and affectionate, like lovers talking. It's attentive, as if life and death were at stake, yours or others. He wants you to know his heart. And that is more valuable than a treasure chest of diamonds. Yes, he is king of heaven and earth. And for that to be any good news to you, he has to be your king. Do you want Jesus to be king of you? So if you do, I'm going to, we haven't, we don't do this very often. We kneel in so many other places in the mass, but I'm going to ask you now, if you can, if you want Jesus to be your king now, please kneel. I mean, some of us can't kneel, take the posture that's most important. Posture just is meant to reflect something in our hearts. I mean, I've had four knee operations. It's hard for me to kneel, but if we can... Let's, <clears throat> this is about you. Don't look at anybody else. And this is saying something to Jesus the King about your desire for his rule in your life. You kneel in front of the cross, in front of the tabernacle. Pray with me in your hearts. Christ the King, I commit my will you. May all my actions reflect your wisdom and love. May my prayer be as your son's prayer, not my will, but yours be done. Help me when I fear your will. Strengthen me, for I know what to do, but fail to do it. So first we commit our will. Secondly, Christ the King, I commit my mind to you. Help me to know your thoughts. I want to have the mind of the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of darkness. Expose my deceptions. Arm me against the lies of the devil. So we commit our will and our mind, lastly, Christ the King, I commit my desires to you. Help me to desire things that are good and true. Help me to desire the very things you desire for me. Reveal to me where my desires are for lesser things, lower things, limited things, and not for your beauty and your grace. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth, in me, in us, like in heaven. And please, Lord, may we never miscalculate 
May we never underestimate who you are and the gift you are to us in being Christ, the eternal King. Amen. <laughs>